Hello Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus signs. Welcome to your tarot reading here at the Intuitive Teacup. Please come into this reading with an open heart and an open mind. Take only what resonates. Ooh, Leo wants to be seen. Leo's like, mm, where'd my Sag at? <laughs> Take only what resonates and release the rest, please. Trust your intuition above all else. Do remember you are accountable and responsible for all your own actions and decisions. This is optional advice, guidance, and an energy check-in. So let's go ahead and set the intention to get Sagittarius, any placements in Sagittarius, clear, helpful, insightful messages, wherever they are at on their spiritual path. Let's do it. Okay, here we go. Sagittarius, past, present, future. What's up? What's up with Sag? Gemini coming up in your past. Also something related to studies or education or, or local travel, salesmen, uh, yeah, sales and selling of products, merchandise. I don't know what that is. Your destiny. All right. And the sixth house routine. <laughs> okay. I got the weirdest message. It's not bad though. Hear me out. This isn't for everyone, right? Again, take, take what resonates, drop the rest. Some of you connected with a Gemini and it's like, you guys are soulmates. You guys are each other's destiny. Like you're meant to be together. But you were out of the honeymoon phase of this relationship where it's starting to become very like sixth house routine. Yeah, just like ho hum, every day is the same. And it's saying you got to get that fire back. You got to get that connection back. Ooh, I just got the chills. It's funny as I'm holding the fire card, right? Um, yeah, it's like you got to ignite the flame again. You got to get the passion back. So you have to tend to the fire, right? Or else it's going to go out. You have to stoke the fire. You have to spend more time together. You have to make the effort, Sag. That's what's coming through here. That's the first message. It, act, it looks good, though. It looks very good. And then you, okay, a lot of people showing up. Some of you are needing to release a Virgo, but really what it is, it's like the mundane. The sixth house is related to Virgo activities. So for some of you, it's like you're a workaholic and you've been putting your relationships, and maybe it's not even, um, you know, sexual, physical, romantic relationships. Maybe it's just like friendship. You know, Gemini, I associate as a sign of friendship as well. Um, you know, the twins, the siblings, partners, however you want to say it, your partner in crime. Maybe some of you have been in workaholic mode and again, like you're needing to stoke the fire of, of the relationships in, in life that keep you warm, you know, metaphorically. Um, maybe there's some fire sign energy coming through for you as well. Obviously you're a fire sign, but um, yeah, some of you, you're being asked to um, delegate to, if you're able to um, say no to some work responsibilities or take a, yeah, I don't know, take a mini vacation, take a staycation, take a sexcation, right? With the fire energy coming up. Um, yeah, there's a lot of work and like, don't get me wrong, there's a time and place for that, you know, but we've done that. Like we're past Capricorn season. Capricorn is, you know, Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo, that's the earthy, let's make money, let's focus on our job, let's build our career into the future, let's build our reputation, like responsibility, dedication, money, 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 right? We did that. Now we're in Aquarius season and Aquarius is all about linking and connection, communities. It's the sign I would say arguably most associated with friendship, right? So this is about tending to your people, tending to your friends, tending to um, your, your social relationships, social dynamics. I'm hearing social butterfly. Um, and so maybe, again, it doesn't have to do with romance. For some of you, it might, though. It may have to do with getting back on the apps or going out wherever people meet people nowadays. I don't even know. Bars, coffee shops. I, I don't know. Whatever it is. But, I mean, Sagittarius, you have no problem meeting people, right? Like, you you instantly become best friends with people you meet at, like, the grocery store, right? That's just very, that's very fire sign energy to me. There's just something people want to be around you. They're just interested in you. Um, so take advantage of that. It's a good time to make links, to make connections, to network, to uh, attract people in in some capacity to to yeah meet matches on on apps or, or whatever it is it could be you know sports teams or group activities maybe you're going bowling right i don't know whatever it is yeah it, this is literally stop working and make time for love um or again work life balance it's cool that that you love your job and you want to give it your all but yeah you need to put some limitations on it like nine to five i'm this girl i'm this guy i'm you know wearing my worker bee hat and then at the end of the day it's like i come back to the person i love and I show them that. I emote. I show my affection. And also I'm able to receive it too. I'm not so burnt out from work that I'm just like, uh, I don't want to tonight, honey. Like it's that kind of energy. It's like you get, you're being asked to tend to a relationship and restoke the fire. Um, and again, friendships, relationships, siblings, cousins included, you know, it doesn't have to be sexual energy, right? But there is something about, you know, you need to reinvigorate some relationship that has been put on the back burner. That's what this message is. Uh, your friends, your people, whoever's in your life, they're there for a reason, right? So make them feel important, express your gratitude, and appreciate them, Sagittarius. 
What else? What else for Sagittarius? Sagittarius. What else? What else for my Saggies? A new message or connecting with a new group? I just heard that song, The Rain, The Park, and Other Things. <laughs> I'm not going to sing it for you because that would be embarrassing. But you know, it's the one in Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> the Cow Sills. Look it up. You'll recognize it. You'll recognize it. I think it's from like the 70s. It's very like flower power. Maybe it's the 60s. I don't even know. Whatever. Here we go. Rambling. I always do. I always ramble in my sad readings. The Rendezvous and the Park. Yeah, some of you had a faithful meeting in the park or you went on a stroll in the park with your sweetheart. That feels very cute, very picturesque, very storybook, very romantic. You guys were holding hands and smiling. And then again, it's, it's almost to me, for some of you, it's like the memory of past love or like the, the romantic fantasy too. It's like wanting to feel that, wanting to feel alive again, wanting to, it's like kind of fall head over heels madly in love with someone. For some of you, you still can. You're already with your person. But again, other things are, it's almost like you guys are, are feel like you're being pulled apart. Not because you don't love each other, not because there isn't passion. Again, it's just life distractions. Like some of you need to unplug and go camping for the weekend and reconnect with your person or again, your friends. Sorry, I'm not trying to repeat the message, but that frequently happens when I do two spreads. It's like, no, 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 that's the message. Make sure they heard you. Um, so let's see. Some of you, there's something about incorporating the five senses. And it's, yes, it's being related to me as a way to connect with people, but it also has to do with connecting to your own body. I did see the Taurus card at the bottom of the deck, but it didn't come out in this deck. So Taurus has a lot to do with, with the, it's the body, right? It's the earth. It's the second house. Um, but it has a lot to do with the senses, right? And, and pleasure and enjoyment um, and uh, luxury, right? It's a Venus ruled sign. So for you, Sagittarius, I think they're saying like, treat yourself, you know, buy the aromatherapy candles uh, candles buy the aromatherapy candles get a massage you know listen to your favorite music swim in the pool it's like it's like get the senses involved the eyes the ears the feeling the touching the whatever i'm missing you know what i mean the tactile stuff that's very important for earthy energy and so i'm thinking maybe some of you are either have heavy earth placements in your chart. Maybe you're cuspy with, with Capricorn. Maybe you're an earth sign rising, whatever it is. It doesn't really matter. Or it might also be saying that you're, you're, you have a buddy or a partner or someone who is very into kind of like the, the full experience, the sensual experience. It's like, yeah, I'm hearing all encompassing. So like, again, like a weekend getaway or like a buddy trip to go do this, go do that. That would be very important. Something about the kitchen, it's like the aroma is very important. Um, so if, if that has to do with reinvigorating your sex life, it's like, yeah, get the candles going, get the perfume out, get the candles, get the, yes, you know, something that appeals to the senses. Like <laughs> some of you, it's like, you smell take a shower <laughs> I'm just kidding I'm just kidding totally kidding all right yeah but no the aroma is important the aroma for sure um some of you, there's, I see some of you dating for, for the first time in a while. You may have been on hiatus and it's like, you're, yeah, I see your mind concocting like this little plan of all the, all the cool things you're going to do for your person and roll out the red carpet for them or vice versa. If this isn't you, Sag, it's someone, I, I, I'm getting like you're about to meet them. You're about to meet them. So I feel like maybe you've already connected. If this is a dating app, like you're texting a little bit, maybe you've had a couple phone calls or whatever, whatever, or you, maybe you know this person socially and you've set a date to, to meet and, and, you know, do the the whole thing. Um, again, something about like a stroll through the park. Um, I guess that doesn't have to be literal, but it's just the idea of like not necessarily having a destination. I think metaphorically it has to do with being open-minded. It's like you're just kind of strolling and seeing where you end up. You don't necessarily desire a fixed outcome. There's like a meandering and a wandering and sharing stories and talking about this and kind of going where life takes you um, without sort of the expectation of, okay, is this going to end at my apartment or is this going to end, you know, in the taxi or whatever. There isn't that sort of pressure of, of, of needing or desiring anything specific. And I actually really like that. It's just like there's, it feels kind of Sagittarian, like it's optimistic, but there isn't necessarily a, this is what we're doing. There isn't this regimented system. And like, there's just, it, there, it's airy and it's light and it's breathable. You might be connecting with an air sign and like the conversation is fire. It's really, really good. Um, and so with that, like, I'm almost getting this metaphor of like, it starts with conversation and that's the basis of your relationship. Again, that feels very like texting, online dating. Then it kind of moves into the more, I, I don't know, talking about work or, or thinking about the practicality of, can you guys make this work? Do you have time for each other? Or again, work-life balance. And then like, 
more of the emotions start to flood in where you actually realize that you really like this person and like you kind of can't imagine dating anyone else right now. Um, that feels very like all encompassing, like the ocean Piscean energy. Again, a Jupiter ruled sign. It feels kind of all or nothing. Um, I think you're having trouble stoking the fire or keeping the embers warm in relationships that it's almost like they're half hearted. I think the Jupiter energy wants to feel something in in an extreme um, to, to some extent, but it's like it's it's more like let's go big or go home. Like let's do all the bells and whistles. Let's get the fancy dinner and book the fancy hotel and like or whatever it is. I don't mean to make it superficial and materialistic, but it's like let's do this or not do it, but like, don't give me this half-hearted, oh, I don't know what I want, but I love you, but I can't. It's like, you don't have time for that. Who does, right? Um, and, and so yeah, there's like a, an empowered sense of like knowing what you want. And I think because of that, I'm getting this, this idea of like, you have a, a lot more clarity on what you want, what you're willing to tolerate. And to be honest, it has to do with setting the bar higher. Um, so when you vibrate that energy, when you know in your heart what you want and what you deserve, the universe ushers that into you in the form of a new relationship or a new person. Um, and, and again, for some of you that are already in a commitment, it's not necessarily that it's lacking. Well, maybe that maybe it is lacking a little bit, but it's not saying like, oh, we're done for. It's just I think you both need to acknowledge the way things used to be and how much excitement you had for each other. And again, sort of re, re, reinvigorating it, deciding to make certain adjustments and, and alterations in how you show up for each other so you can get that feeling of magic back. Um, that might be with a water sign, a Scorpio Cancer Pisces. All right. So what you need to release, you have the casino. So I almost think metaphorically this, is that even a word? Am I using that right? Metaphorically? It feels like a word, but if, if it's not, excuse me, you know, whatever. <laughs> you know how it goes in tarot readings. Symbolically. We'll go with symbolically. <laughs> I don't know. Part of me is wanting to say you need to stop gambling, but I feel like that's not literal. For, I mean, for most of you. Although Sagittarius is a sign associated with good luck and gambling, so maybe you need to hit the casinos less, right? Maybe your person is coming coming in saying, hey, we need to be more financially responsible. We can't we can't do all the bells and whistles that we used to. Again, we, we need to be a little more practical and matter of fact or or you know, whatever. Be more be more consistent and, and responsible with money. For some of you, that's it. I also think there's an element here of, of not showing your hand versus showing your hand. And I'm struggling with that because I'm actually getting holding back, which is not the energy I felt so far. It's been very open and, and sociable and saying what you like and what you don't like. And again, like not holding back in terms of sharing who you are. That's very much a, much a message here. Again, like the Piscean energy of just like, I'm open and I'm fluid and I'm going with it. Like, I like that. But then something about this, it has to do with not showing your hand. And so I'm wondering if you are needing to let go of someone who doesn't know what they want or someone who is being a little bit less forward and truthful about what they're really desiring. Yeah, I feel like there's an energy around you that you may have connected with socially or dating wise or a coworker. And like you were hoping that over time there would be more trust and there would be kind of like this. I'm hearing changing of the guard. That's weird. I don't know why that phrase is coming up. But I think over time you were hoping this person would would open up more and, and share with you. And it's almost like they're just like a what is the expression like a steel vault or something like you you just can't penetrate it. You can't get in. <laughs> Some of you that's you know exactly what I'm talking about. That's funny. And, and so here's the thing. I almost think you're being asked, is that a waste of your energy? Is it worth your time? Because you're showing up with so much enthusiasm. And I, honestly, guys, honestly, I'm hearing there's someone else. There's someone better. Don't settle. Yeah, don't settle for someone who's very closed off. That Something about that feels very, an, like, antithesis of what you're looking for. And yet you're putting stock and time and attention in someone who's very just like... I don't know. Like they're being a diva. Like you're connecting with someone who's like they love the attention that you're giving them, but they're not giving you anything back. And it's like you're learning the hard way of of maybe not the hard way, but you're you're learning an important lesson on who's worth your time and energy. And like I just get this idea of you rolling out the red carpet, whether you're male or female or whatever you identify with. It's like you treat this person really well. You've been treating them like a queen or a king or whatever, and yet you're getting peanuts back. You're being breadcrumbed. I don't know if this person has a different option. It might be a Leo. It might be another Sagittarius. I, I don't know what that is, but it's like it's probably not worth it. Especially, like If this person isn't bringing joy and happiness into your life, it, it's probably not worth it, especially this early on in the game because this feels like dating and, and deciding which romantic option you actually want to, um, you know, it, it kind of has to do with putting your eggs in one basket. 
<laughs> Sagittarius. All these, all these references, they're killing me. They're killing me. Um, <laughs> I lost my train of thought. I do think you are starting to invest more seriously with one. I think there is a, a something that is leading to a much larger commitment or, or um, possibly moving in with someone too. I'm hearing like cozy cottage vibes. Does that make sense to anyone out there? Okay, so it might be a cancer. You may be uh, being asked to move away from a cancer um, or something about a car, someone who's like, I, it may even have to do with superficiality. Like they, they talk a lot about material possessions and, you know, owning the mansion and owning the sports car. And like, again, something about that is like exciting and cool to you. But I think you're questioning if their heart is in the right place. I'm also getting this idea of taking a risk on a cancer or, or a cancer taking a risk on you. I don't know what, but it's, but here's the thing though. It's being asked in terms of what you need to move away from. So like, I don't get it. What, like, what's the storyline there? holding out for something I do, there might be a cancer that is looking to make a big offer to you Sagittarius but I, I don't know I don't know casino hasn't cancer's been showing up in your reading recently right this this message doesn't feel new to me cards on the table jackpot moments betting and odds Okay, here's what this message is. It doesn't matter what zodiac sign is involved. Cancer and Taurus and, and the earth signs, Taurus and Virgo Capricorn, are heavily showing up. I will say that. I think this has to do with... I'm trying to phrase this correctly because it's, it's a little bit foggy to me. Yeah, this isn't about dreaming about something. This is about taking the steps and the action, the energy to actually put something in place and make it happen. There's almost like this optimistic, hopeless, romantic, if this person's going to be in my life, it'll happen. And to a certain extent, I agree with you. But also, what are you doing to make it happen or vice versa? If, if you're dealing with a person who's very much like long distance, we're meant to be together and blah, blah, blah. And you're like, yeah, but like, do you like, you know, do we want to like move in together? Like do, if you're trying to put the practical steps in place to actually to something to, like to take root to like nurture it and grow it over time like commitment stuff and your person's being very like wavering or non-committal that in itself is a sign to you so again that's not gonna be for everybody but that's for some of you it's like the hopeless romantic dream of what something could be falling in love with someone's potential or your future storyline that's great but i think you're also being asked to acknowledge but like what about now like what's available to you now and like it again it's a mixed message are you willing to wait can you be patient is that the hangman energy is that why it's coming through again piscean energy big time is it is it having to do something differently and and not approach this with such steam and gusto knowing that good things take time or is it the opposite if you're trying to i keep hearing the word root like root something in the earth and nurture it so that it grows over time because again responsibility commitment discipline those are very like you know venus is in capricorn right so it's taking our relationships very seriously it's not this kind of coming and going fly by night thing so like if you're wanting to do that and your person is very wishy-washy, then I think you know. I think that's your answer. Um, yeah, it's like it, it, love energy has been coming through a lot in most of the readings. And I, I think it's because, you know, Venus and Capricorn is an interesting energy, right? Because, you know, Capricorn is not the most lovey-dovey, showy, affectionate sign on the exterior anyway. But like when you have a Capricorn who's in love with you, they will pull out all the stops. That's like daddy energy, right? It's like they want to build a life around you and comfort you and please you. And they almost view it as their responsibility to do that. And again, I don't necessarily mean to make it icky or in a, in a superficial materialistic way, but it's like when a Capricorn loves you, you will know it. You won't be questioning it. It might take time. I'll give you that. Capricorns are slow to approach. They need to get comfortable with it. And if they feel like you're taking them away from their work responsibilities, again, they're, they're a, shine, a sign that shows up to work, right? That's, that's sort of like what they view as their life purpose, you know, building their legacy, ascending the mountain, right? They're the mountain goat. But it's, it's the sea goat, really. So again, they can dip into that watery, fluid, soulful energy too. But I don't know why I'm going off on this spiel. See, I do it every time in the Sagittarius readings, but I feel like I can go there with you guys. Um, but I don't know, what are you being asked to let go of and what are you taking a risk on? And this, and I almost want to say this person might not be taking a risk on you though, 
or, or rolling the dice, seeing what happens. Some person is very like hopeless romantic, let's go in and see what happens. And the other person is much more conservative or or negative or not, you are you don't believe in the same thing of what this could be. You're not viewing it for the same potential. So what you're being asked to move towards, enchantment, magic and intrigue, hidden wisdom and the gym. I can't think of two more like opposing energies. <laughs> like, like, I'll be honest, like sold on this one. Love it. And I'm like, oh, the gym, that doesn't sound fun at all. <laughs> but that's just me. That's, that's my bias, right? No. Awesome. This is like Aries fiery energy. It's like getting your passion, getting, getting your self-esteem up, making yourself look good. I think you're making yourself look good because you know there's a connection coming into you or you're motivated even more because you've met someone who may actually lead a very physically active lifestyle and in a sense you're wanting to match their energy not that you're trying to be someone you're not it's just like their power of influence or their something about them inspires you to want to show up for yourself in a good way too so that you can show up for them and that seems awesome that seems really healthy i absolutely love that all right who's coming through in this reading who is coming through in the Sagittarius reading? Leo, Leo, Capricorn, and Gemini. See, my Capricorn spiel wasn't for nothing. I'm just saying. All right, we got two Leos. So you may be dealing with two Leos. Strong Leo placements. One more. Anything else? And Sagittarius. Look at you. Might be dealing with one as well. All right, guys. That's. Oh, wait. I got to do your Moon Oracle card. Here we go. Real quick. Anything else? Recap for Sagittarius. <laughs> Let's see. Don't let your past hold you back. The South Node. All right. One more. Whoa, that popped right out. That was hot. That was meant for you. Oh, there's, look at that. More Capricorn energy, y'all. Hard work is paying off new moon in Capricorn. So yeah, you may have dated, started to date someone in Capricorn season and it's it's growing. It, it's, it's developing, again, more stability, more strength, more seriousness of needing to put time and energy into this rather than just having kind of like this, you know, uncommitted but fun social interaction it's like no this is this is warming up this is getting kind of serious y'all are falling in love that's what i get okay thanks for joining me today sagittarius please show me some love and hit that like button i would greatly appreciate it or if you want to leave a comment or an emoji uh that would all help this reading gain a greater audience uh on youtube it helps my channel grow if you are not already in, um, subscribed to my channel, I would invite you to do that as well. Hit the notification bell if you want to be alerted when I post readings. And if you want more content from me, you can find me on Instagram and Facebook. Thank you so much. I'm the Intuitive Teacup, and I will see you soon for more tarot. Bye, Sagittarius.